It's Bill Krakenberger and Rosalie Michaels on the Wisecrack Sports Betting Podcast by WSN.com. Hey, everyone. Welcome back for another episode of Wisecracks. I got my buddy, Bill Krakenberger, with me. Hey, Bill. How's it going? Hey, Rosalie. How are you? Everything okay? Yeah, everything's good. I'm trying to stay cool. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I hear you. Uh, 109 in Vegas yesterday, but... (laughs) I like going out to the pool, too. Listen, we're in air condition, too. People get crazy all over the country. How do you guys live in that heat? Especially yeah. Arizona. You're hotter than us a lot. You know, we, we, we find ways. We find ways. I mean, we're, it's, we're in air condition 90% of the time. We are not hot, yeah. hotter than you. Everybody always says that when I go to Vegas. Everybody always says that. They're like, oh, Phoenix, you're hotter than us. No, I just came from there to here. Trust me. I look at my watch. I looked at it yesterday. I had this conversation yesterday with my husband. Everybody from Vegas always says that. And I'm like, hotter in Vegas right now than it is in Phoenix. It was 108 in Phoenix yesterday. Ha! <laughs> right. <laughs> but, so, but enough of that. Let's get on to what we've got coming up on today's episode. We had a fun time last week talking about golf. Today, we're moving into some other um, strategy sessions, which I'm really excited about. Uh, first things first, we have our, our uh, strategy discussion. As we do each week, we're really going to do a deep dive this week into line shopping. Now, a lot of people ask, what is it? How does it work? How can you use it right now to make better bets? Now, Crack, is it safe to say that line shopping for you is a big part of your overall betting strategy? It's a giant part of my overall betting strategy. You have to line shop. We're going to get into it. And uh, it's very important. You know, sometimes I'll just talk so fast and talk right over it like everyone knows what that means or, you know, it seems like it's pretty simple for them uh, concept, but really it's not a lot. So we're going to get into that today and explain to the viewers exactly what I mean. I'm going to break it down in a good way for them. That's good because I know what online shopping is, but I need a little bit more help of help with just line shopping. So yeah, then after our strategy session, we have a great guest this week. You know and love him a lot, right? Jay Cornegay. He runs one of the biggest sports books in Las Vegas, and he's going to talk to us about how the reopening is going because that's big news and how odds makers are setting lines in these unprecedented times because th- there's a lot going on that we're not used to doing right now. Yes, uh, we have uh, the pinnacle of the industry, really, uh, is the Superbook here in Vegas. Probably the best place, in my opinion, to watch a game with buddies. They invested over $5 million in screens and the atmosphere uh, just uh, two years ago. So we have Jay, who's, who's a legend in the industry, like I said, he was, he's one of the first guys ever to make proposition bets on the Super Bowl 25 years ago when he ran the Imperial Palace. So we, that's have, incredible. we have the guy here that's responsible for uh, shaping the NFL Super Bowl prop industry. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah, he, uh, I'm interested to hearing more about that. So we'll get to that in a little bit. And then, of course, a favorite segment already, the picks and plays, right? This is where um, we save the best for last for what you guys are looking for. And today's no exception. We're going to be wrapping up the show with a very special pick from Crack. And we're also going to be looking at what's coming up this week as far as big betting opportunities go. And a new segment that we premiered last week that is really, really popular. We're going to answer your questions out there, your Twitter uh, Twitter questions. And you guys can ask us anything you want by tweeting at WSN Sports, Bill Crackman, or me at Rosalie Michaels. And we're going to answer your questions this week and if we and next week's show. So make sure you get those Twitter questions in. But... Right now, let's get into that main strategy uh, discussion. We want to talk about line shopping. So, Bill, explain to me. We're going to start right to the basics, right? For people that haven't done it before, what's your advice on the most important steps to start line shopping? Yes, it's, it's, it's so vital, and I talk about this on so many different platforms. It's so vital to have... Uh, multiple outs. And I, when I say the word out is a perfect example of what I, what I mean, I say the word out and I just, you know, always just uh, say, all right, assume that everyone knows what out, what an out means. No, yeah, see, when you say out, I, I think back to my dating days of how I get out of a date. Yeah, <laughs> so, no. So having outs out. is means 
what, what an out is to me, it's an outlet to bet outlet. Oh, okay. So that that's, and it's out for short. And that's what a lot of the you know, sharp guys in the industry, you know, use as a, as a short for out outlet is an out. So um, I have multiple ones. Of course, I have every single one in Vegas that allows me to play uh, except for uh, stations and, and William Hill, which both threw me out and off the apps for winning. Um, so, but you know, when people come to town, they always have, a strategy kind of in their arsenal. They say, Oh, I listened to Bill Krakenberger or, or, or read an article on, 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 you know, having multiple places to play and how to be a winning sports better. They're just going to come in for a weekend. And I want to use that. Someone comes in Friday, they're leaving Sunday night or even Monday. So when they come in town, what they really are supposed to do, if you're serious about making money, betting sports, you're supposed to have different sports apps funded. And what that means is, Every casino now, every sportsbook company has an application which you can download in the app store. This way you can have their set of lines and you can bet legally from the borders of Las Vegas. Okay. So they, people come into town and they have, um, you, you, you just have to make deposits. It's, sometimes it's a little inconvenient, but hey, this, you're here to make money, right? So, so do you make um, the deposits in person or can you do that on the apps as well? Well, well actually there are ways to uh, fund the apps without physically going to the casino, a few of them. I don't recommend that, though, because then you're going to be at a disadvantage because an outside processor has to get involved. They're going to charge you a certain percent, you know, 2%. 3%. So now you're already out 2 3%. The deposit, 1000 bucks is going to cost you 30 bucks or whatever. I don't recommend that. Just okay. listen, if you're staying somewhere, you just go across the street and fund their app. You could literally stay on the four corners, which they call the fabulous four corners of Las Vegas, Las Vegas Boulevard and Flamingo, and you can have Caesars, you can have BetMGM, and then you can literally go like Caddy Corner and fund William Hill. Uh, these are all walking distance, by the way. So okay. you can have three or four apps. Uh, I recommend going over to stations, though, and having their app funded. Uh, I recommend if you're on the same four corners, just a short walk down to the Gold Coast and having the Coast Casinos app funded. So you really want those apps funded because I'll tell you why they're the sports books that are known as the square sports books in town. The latter ones I've talked about William okay. Hill station. Okay, You just Coast. said, sorry, you just said something. You called it a what sports book, a square the, sport, book? The square or sports book. And that's, yeah, it's great. See, I'm glad you're stopping me and bringing yeah. up these things. What when does I that say mean? square, that means uh, the book is mainly lots of guys going in, betting favorites and overs, parlay cards, See teasers, a lot of, they don't know what they're doing. They're not professional gamblers. They're just ah. going in. So therefore, the sports book is forced to overmove those favorites with anticipation of their betting crowd. They know who's coming in. But okay. not only that, that is actually not only that, when they actually do get the money in on those favorites and these overs, when the people are playing the favorites in the sport and the over compared to over under. That means they're forced to move that line an extra half a point or sometimes even a full point where guys like me or listeners to our show can realize you can actually pick up an extra half a point. And especially during the NFL when, let's face it, these people come in town, they're betting the Kansas City Chiefs, they're betting the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. Chicago Bears is actually a big team to bet in this town. Mm -hmm. People love to bet the Bears. But yeah. it's the favorites that I'm really talking about. The Patriots in years past, that won't be the – as much of a case this year, but so you have to just look and you now what you're doing is you're line shopping. You're actually going to pull up all four apps. And that's what I recommend. You come into okay. town with four grand, put a thousand in each app. Got it. And you're going to look at the lines on all four apps. A lot of times the line will be the same, but if you get those apps that I just told you, you're going to get those extra half points because they're, like I said earlier, they're forced to over move and uh, you should be betting against the public. You should really want to be in the bookmaker's shoes you should be on, you should want to be on the bookmaker's side of things when it comes to kickoff gotcha so um when you say be on the bookmaker's sides okay so you've got the apps i've got all four apps i've put my money into each i'm looking at the lines of uh, to see who has the best opportunity right who's got the best lines but betting in the vein of the casino the sports book not in the vein of the public, right? So you're going against the grain here? Yes, you are. You, you actually, you're not going to be betting those favorite teams that you love. You're not going <laughs> to be betting 
uh, with your heart or with emotion, yeah. like we've talked about on previous episodes, you're going to be okay. betting with your brain. That's what you want to bet with your brain. So, okay. um, uh, you know, before I get into that, let me say something I wanted to say, and I just forgot there. You know, people go come into town. They're all pumped up. They listen to Bill Krakenberger. They're ready to go. They're listening to WSN. They're listening to you, Rosalie. They want to, they, 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 their plan is to come in town and do exactly what we're saying. But I don't know what happens. It's like the bulbs and the neon of the strip. It mesmerizes them. All the endorphins <laughs> are all pumped up. And, you know, I know people love to go up to the counter and bet, and bet at the sports book they're staying in and have a physical ticket to touch and have money to physically touch when that decision's over. Well, if you're here to do, have fun and you want to have that money in your pocket instantly and you want instant gratification, I guess that's what you're going to do. However, I tell you right now, if you're in this to make money, you have to overcome those vices of, you know, wanting to hang out and drink at the pool and party. You can do all that stuff, but have your apps funded. You know, if you have your apps funded, you can still hang out at the pool and pull up your iPad or your phone and, and have uh, access to all different sport, sports outs, the different casinos, uh, yep. lines in town. So I'm just telling you, I know what happens. I know, the, I know what my buddy's doing. My buddy's come to town and I said, ah, I didn't go over there. I wanted to go get it. I wanted to drink with my buddy. I wanted to play a little blackjack. I wanted to see some crap, yeah. craps and, you know, I, I, I just don't, it, it, like I said, if you're serious about it, you'll listen yeah. and you'll realize you need to listen when the weekend's up, you go across the street, you know, a couple hours before you go home when the sports is over and you withdraw the money and take it home to wherever you're going, California or wherever else, Arizona, you know, it, I know it's a little more, a couple more steps, but all you need is one more victory by taking a seven and a half points on Buffalo bills against new England where the game landed on seven and the casino you were staying in, the sports book had a line of seven. You got the extra hook, which is the extra half a point we call hooks. Yeah. And because you were smart enough, you made that money just because you were uh, listening to us and listening to our show or, or uh, you know, just listen to common sense now. Really, you need more than one line set when you come to Las Vegas. All so right. uh, go back so to your original question, though. So um, yeah, let's talk about like, okay, so we know what we're going to do when we, we do lines in Vegas, right? When we're, when we're shopping the lines in Vegas, but now, I mean, the whole country is pretty open. There's more than just Vegas, right? So, so what is it? Let's, let's go back to the basics of line betting. When we're shopping the line, what are we looking for? Um, across all the platforms right because you it's not just in vegas just having fun in vegas if you are a serious a sharp as you call them and you're looking at all the lines across all the sports books across all of the united states what are you looking for well you know you have to be in that jurisdiction to be able to legally bet so okay uh, and you're right i shouldn't just talk las vegas because let, let's face it i go to new jersey on big weekends because New Jersey, I have a, a lot more opportunity than I actually do in Las Vegas. There's about 20 legal licensed sports books in New Jersey that you're able to bet on. And only four or five of them are on an, an app. I'm, I'm sorry, only four or five of them are on a brick and mortar casino. They're all on apps. So okay. if I go to the Meadowlands, I can have FanDuel. If I go down to Atlantic City, I can go to resorts. Matter of fact, Meadowlands has, has FanDuel and PointsBet. There's two different apps you can fund. I always have them funded, those two. And now you go down to Atlantic City, there's only a couple different brick and mortars you can go into and have a set of lines. Uh, you can go to Caesars Resorts, you can go into a William Hill, or you can go into Hard Rock. And then the other one is, um, uh, I don't know if I said Caesars, Caesars is a, is a big one. So, okay. um, so you can go have those. However, you're talking only six apps that you can go in and, fi and finance in person. The other 14, you have to finance over their app. It's okay. an app only based betting element. So you're going to bet only over your app. So even in New Jersey, even more so, you should have those apps funded. And I know it's, it's a little more difficult than Las Vegas. Vegas, you could just go right across the street and get your money. Uh, there, you have to request a payout. They send you checks or they send you even, actually, they could, they could just send you uh, the wires, wires to your bank. There's a couple different ways that they uh, the, are finding out that you can withdraw, that we find out we can, you can withdraw all deposit there. So I tell you right now, not just there, Arizona, I'm not Arizona. Um, not Arizona. Colorado, Colorado, <laughs> Colorado, Colorado, giant. They have more places to bet in Colorado than they do right now in Las Vegas even. So okay. Colorado has also jumped in there big time. And don't forget these jurisdictions with these Euro books. I talk about it in the past. 
I'm so big on it. Make sure you get your bonuses. Make sure you go to, yeah. listen, WSN. Let's get a little bit into WSN. I was yeah. on there today looking. I clicked on Colorado. I clicked on the different states, the different jurisdictions. I mean, I love at one click, you could find out all the different bonuses you get uh, in one shot. I mean, we really can't get them in Nevada here. One or two places dangles little carrots for you, but nothing like the books across the country and then legal, the different legal jurisdictions. And WSN is really the place to go to find out that. You can just click on those jurisdictions. Like I said, a pop-up opens up, all the different bonuses, thousands of dollars at your hands, at your fingertips there on WSN. Great information there on WSN, including, you know, which, which books and, and, and the bonuses, like you said. So now, you know, whatever area we're in, tell us, walk us through how you actually shop for lines, what bets, what numbers, how does it work? What are we looking for when we're, whatever jurisdiction we're in, what are we looking for? Well, you know, personally me, I want to know uh, if I'm betting on an underdog, which years ago I would bet 70% of my bets would be underdogs or even more and okay. depending on what sport. That kind of- is, even... is that just because you're going against the grain of the public? Yes, normally okay. you are. But now I know if I'm going to bet an underdog, I would want to bet at a place like, let, let's use Nevada, uh, mm -hmm. Stations, Will Hill, uh, Coast Casinos, which is, uh, there's the three that I know I'm, I should look if I want to bet an underdog, check their lines compared to other lines. If I want to bet a favorite, I may get the best bet here in Vegas also at Circa or Westgate uh, or even South Point where someone comes in and, and they're, they're sharper. The bookmakers that work at the books themselves, the guys that actually uh, follow the lines and, and, and move the lines, they're sharper than the guys that are at the other square sports book where really they could sit back and just watch all these guys come in and bet favorites. And they, they, it's almost like robotic type of a, a book way of booking bets compared to someone at Circa or Westgate that has to actually stay on top of it because they have, they allow the, sh the sharp guys to bet uh, also. So they can't just move on, uh, on, on air, that's where it's called. Moving on air means you're moving on someone that comes in and just bets that sharp. So the sports books in, in the other places that I talked about, the square places, yes, they're just going to move uh, and they're going to have their lineup a half point more on, on a lot of events. And they're going to move based on so much volume where the sharper sports books, they're not going to move on their square betting base. They're just going to book that. They're just going to book it. They're getting 11 to 10, which means the public lays $11 to win $10 on every bet. They're going to book that bet more than, uh, more than anything. So they're, 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 they really know how to book real sharp, just like our, our, uh, our guy Jay is going to talk about a little bit here. In a while. Okay. But what am I looking for? What am, what am I looking for? Somebody that's coming in and are there specific bets that I'm looking for? Are there specific numbers that I'm looking for? You know, what, what is it? Cause it's okay. I definitely want to go to the square, um, the square books because those are the ones I'm, I know I'm going to get the better um, options for on the underdogs, but, on, the yeah, underdogs. on the underdogs. Yep. So I'm, I'm looking to bet an underdog. So how do I figure out which bet I'm going to take an underdog on? And like, let's talk football NFL, right? How do I know which NFL team to bet the underdog on? Cause there's an underdog in every game. How do I know which one and what type of number am I looking for? What am I looking for? Well, I hate to give myself a little shameless plug. I'm hoping you're <laughs> going to come to crack wins here and, uh, and, and follow what we do because we win. So okay. that's one indicator of, of, uh, of, of underdogs and uh, of plays in general. We, we actually win. We're up, we won 150 units last season. Uh, you know, people that work 40, 50 hours a week, 60 hours a week, it's hard to do research. Yeah. You want to come to Vegas, hang out, go to the pool, have a drink. You know, you could just follow me and, 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 and see what we do at crack wins. But uh, going on to other things, you can, you have to know indicators in the market. You have to do your own research too, in, in okay. some ways we, we do it for you. Like I said, at, at crack wins, but it's reading socials. It's finding out who you like through your own contacts, or maybe you and your buddies talking, uh, sitting around, listen, everyone loves to follow these prognosticators, these guys on TV, these uh, interviews that the host of betting shows, not betting shows of, of, of sports talk shows on even let's just use the, um, the NFL shows, the pregames on, on TV. 
They're yeah. former players, former coaches. Mm -hmm. So they talk like they know about this particular week. They all give picks in the end. Yep. Listen, no, none of them, none of them win in the end. They don't, they don't really know what, what, what we know and, and the research that we do. Uh, yeah. I look at a guy like Jimmy the Greek years ago. He was unbelievable. Um, this is back when I was a little kid. My dad used to always ask me, which Jimmy the Greek on? That was NFL Today with Brent Musburger and, uh, you know, a couple different guys were on there with Jimmy the Greek. I think Phyllis George. They're, they're, this was a great show. It was, you know, it was only a couple of networks to watch. So people waited to see what Jimmy the Greek said because he was the Greek. He had that look. He had the, he was a dark skin, olive oil, complexion, diamond rings, gold chains. And they loved to... They thought he was a professional because he touted himself as a professional gambler. But really, uh, he was just a good he was a good showman because the Greek didn't win. He didn't win that. <laughs> so, OK, so so let's let's do an example here. So back with the Super Bowl, the line was one and a half. Right. It was a, a tight. Is that something you'd go after or do you, is that is that too tight? Are you looking for a spread of something? You know, it like, what are the indicators that go like, obviously I can get some good underdog picks based on research by going to crack wins, but um, what, you know, what numbers type of numbers then am I looking for is something like that. That's a really close game, what you want, or do you want something that's got a bigger spread? Well, let's look at, let's look at that Super Bowl. Uh, I actually laid pick on the Super Bowl on okay. Kansas city when the line first came out. Matter of fact, I bet it at, at the Westgate. So I actually bet that game pick them. It went to about two. Uh, there was a couple two and a half for, for just for a second. But uh, so that line moved. So I had the best of it in the, in the game on that game. However, you know, I have to tell you, if you're going towards the opposite way, if you're looking to pick underdogs mm -hmm. on a game like that, I would more look at the money line unless you get to the number three. Three is the keyest number in the NFL. So more games land on three than any other number. Okay. And, you know, I'll look to if it's two and a half. I'll actually look at a sports book that I can buy it to three. They sell you the half a point. Okay, so let's let's go to that Super Bowl example. So you said that you would you bet actually the favorite in that. It, was that because you found a line number that you liked? And how did you do that? I actually bet a lot of money on that pick 'em when the line came out because I, I know the public was going to be on Kansas City, really. It wasn't even that I liked the play. I just knew the public was going to be on Kansas City. And I was hoping maybe it went to three. So if it went to three, you'd have a good opportunity there to bet both ways, which I don't recommend doing, though. That, that, that's another episode in itself about middling and scalping. We'll talk about that later on okay. in a different episode. But um, So I bet that with the intent of the line moving. And it did move. It went to two, even two and a half. I kept my position, pick them, minus $1.10, which means you're laying 11 to 10, $110 to win 100 so I actually bet like 5,000 on that because that was the max bet at the time. I bet like 5,500 to win 5,000 on Kansas City Pick'em. And, you know, I, I thought it was going to move and it did move. But again, if you're going to be betting on these particular kind of games when the line is under three, you might be better off betting on a, on a money line on anything two and a half or less points because most of the games land on three, seven, ten. They're you know, divisible by that, by that number. So... That, that's another episode too, though, Money Line. Okay, so going back to, to learning about how to, to, to shop for a line, okay? This was an instance where you, were, you, you looked and you, you bet the favorite, which is not what you normally do. You normally bet the underdog, right? So what did you see when you were shopping the lines for that that made you go, that's where I want to go? Well, the first thing I have is a tool professionals use. You pay for it. It's a Don Best rotation screen. It's a live odds screen. Let's just say it's like a day trader having a day trading screen they pay for of gotcha. live instantaneous odds. So I have a live one, which is up to the you know millisecond, but there's plenty of free two, two minute delayed odd services all over the internet. Uh, even my site, Crack Wins, we have a set of lines up from an offshore sports book that I really respect. Um, through the Don Best feed, uh, which I respect their line. So I have a, also a set of lines on my uh, Crack Wins app. But you can go and you could, you could pull up one of these free line services. Mm -hmm. That'll give you the best indicator of the lines all across the country, the okay. offshore lines, and also more importantly, the legal sports books that you can bet on here in the United States. It's good to know what's going on in all these sports books because now next time you could say, wow, 
Look at this. This game just kicked off, and I could have had plus 10 and a half on this game, or I have plus 10. And look, look what happened. The game landed 30 to 20. It landed on 10. I pushed. I could have won if I had this other place. So it's With good to know where those lines are. And the same thing if on the opposite side of that. If you're betting the favorite, there's nine and a half and, and tens, and you laid 10 and it landed on 10, then you could have had a nine and a half in X sports book. Okay, so what I'm really looking for is when, when I'm looking at all the different lines, I see a lot of them are going to be the same, like you said. But if I see one that has just that half point in one direction or the other, that's what I'm looking for. Yes, you're looking for a half point. And I'll tell you something. Sometimes you're looking for even a full point. You'll see sports books, one hang a minus 10, and another sports book hang a minus 11. And okay. you're like, wow. That's unbelievable. These games, these numbers land. These games land 31, 20, whatever it may be. These games, these numbers do land. So you have to make sure that if you want to be a professional or be serious, not even a professional, if you want to just be a little more serious about your gambling future, that yeah. you definitely shop for lines and you definitely have your money deposited at some different places to bet sports. Okay. So I, I money deposited that way you can bet on whichever line is, is the best. That makes sense. So find the, the best, uh, the best line for the game that you want to bet and, and go with that. Now you say the lines move, right? So when you lock in, you lock in that number, when you bet at three and a half, instead of three, you lock in that number, correct? Yes, correct. That's correct. Okay, so you're locking that in no matter where the line goes from there, you still have it at three and a half. That's Correct. why it's important to shop the lines. Correct. And then, okay, so then is that is that the basics of it? That's exactly how you do it. You just look at all the different lines. You look for the one that's gonna give you the most advantage, like if you're in the grocery store or if you're, you know, if you're, you are somebody that does online shopping and you look through to see who has the best pricing, it's the same thing, right? That's a fantastic thing. Exactly. You're shopping different places all, you know, online to get something. And then you see maybe uh, Costco has it the cheapest. So you get it from Costco, but sometimes Costco is not the best place to get things. Sometimes, yeah. you know, you have to, you have to actually find out the best place to acquire that product. You have to find out the best place to acquire that line. Okay. So, um, so that's fantastic. I think I really, really understand line shopping and what I'm looking for. Cause I'm a girl who loves a good bargain, especially when it comes to my bankroll, right? <laughs> that's the, uh, the thing that we, uh, we really like. So does line shopping work, especially cause you mentioned before that, that points, but you don't like the money lines as, as much. So does line shopping work, especially well for making certain kinds of bets or for betting on certain sports, or is it just something you do for everything? Okay, so most of the sports like college football, college basketball, NBA, NFL, they all have a point spread line to make it an, an even playing field as far as, a, as far as gambling goes. Uh, but they also have a money line also. But like if you go to a sport like baseball, which hopefully we're going to start, they announced that we're going we're to have baseball starting up again, a 60-game season. So that's a money, that is a money line sport. So that is where – you know, every team is like minus 170, which means you have to lay 170 bucks to win $100. Where on the underdog, you're taking back $1.55 for every $100 you put up. So okay. that, that's a total different sport. Money lines are very much the, the way to go at betting baseball. But in those sports I just mentioned, mostly no one really comes to town to bet money lines on NFL games. They love betting the point with the point spread. So yeah. point spread betting is the way that 90, 95% of the betting is done across all the sports. Okay, got it. Okay, so looking back, you've been doing this a really long time. What's the craziest difference or most valuable bet that you've personally found by line shopping? Do you remember that? So, uh, like, you know, I, I actually have found some games where in the end I say, wow, I can't believe I, I have found <laughs> games. Think about this. I have found games every single weekend this can happen, actually, especially mm -hmm. during a college football, college basketball cross sport. There's a section of the year where you bet both. So and then you have NFL every weekend. I'm going to find games where I took ten and a half and it was nine and a half. Maybe even the sports book I was sitting in. I can't tell you how many times I have won a game when my buddies who came in town to watch the games with me have pushed the game or even uh -huh. lost the game because yeah. they didn't want a line shop. They wanted to go up in the sports book we were 
go up to the counter and bet the game at that sports book. That happens every single year. And I'm sickened by that. These are the guys that are around me. So yeah. if they're not listening to me, wow, that's really, uh, <laughs> that's really scary. But it's happened before where I've won and they've lost. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, I know a lot of friends like that for, from the fantasy football world too. You know, it's the same thing. People will be like, Rosalie, what would you do? And I tell them, and then they still do the opposite thing. And then I'm like, I told you, but right. the line shopping. So you're in an actual sports book and you're still there with your friends, but you're making a bet all over just based on where the best deal is. Right. Yes. Yes, absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm not looking at that line in that casino I'm in. I'm looking yeah. at the lines across the whole entire town. I have every single app here in town that I'm allowed to bet in, like I said earlier. So, uh, and, and I'll tell them, hey, you, you guys, you got you to gotta play this here or there. You got to have money. Fine. You know, they, they come into town right away. First thing you're supposed to do is deposit money in those apps. Get ready for the weekend. Get ready for Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You're going to be with Bill Krakenberger sitting down. You have all the same places he has to bet, or the majority of them. And that's the way, it's the only way you're going to make money in the end. You know, yeah. it, it, listen, it may not happen that weekend. Maybe that weekend you'll make the exact same bets I make and you'll have, you know, you'll, you'll get the same lines or maybe you, you won't get the same lines, but it won't come into play. But I can guarantee you by the end of the season, there'll be three or four games that you wish you were on my side and my line. So um, you've talked about before about waiting for the line to move before you make certain bets. So is there a way to apply that concept to line shopping since you're seeing these lines move at different books and changing in different ways? Might be the most important thing you've asked me today. Oh, hey. <laughs> no, this is really good because I would have forgot to talk about this. So early in the week when the line comes out, believe it or not, most of the public at home don't know, doesn't know this. The line for the following weekend comes out on Sunday night. So literally, you'll see the sports books come out Sunday night with the line for the following week, seven days later. Yeah. So I know there's certain situations I want to jump on Sunday night or Monday or even Tuesday uh, when those lines first pop up in the sports books here around town. I know that certain situations I want to bet right then and there, or if I'm betting on one of those underdogs against one of the public teams, I'll actually wait until the weekend. I'll wait until Sunday or college football Saturday. Listen, the big teams, people love to bet on these mm -hmm. giant you know, powerhouse teams, the Michigans, the Notre Dames, or even though Notre Dame hasn't been as well, as, hasn't played as good as they used to, it's still a public team. So yeah. I know that I'll be betting against the LSUs and the Alabamas and, and I'll be getting those half a points, but I'll be getting those extra half points and easily in college betting against those teams, like I just said, LSU, Alabama, Betting against those teams on game day, right before the game kicks, uh, when all that public money is there, I'll get a full point compared to the, some of the sharper places. So very good to know. You bet early in the week sometimes, or you also bet towards game time if you're looking to bet on a certain team, maybe you're one of those big juicy underdogs. And it could be across anything, NFL, okay. NBA, you know, NFL or college football, I should say. So do you look for, for, uh, for more – Favorite lines at the beginning of the week and correct. underdog lines towards like right before the game. Exactly correct. In most situations, not always. Okay. Uh, you know, the public's getting smarter and smarter. They're knowing to do, uh, they're knowing to look, to, to read socials and find out things and just listen to WSN, the show here that we have. Uh, <laughs> so sooner or later, you know, giving out all this information uh, across me and, and a lot of other guys talk about it now that are in this business and you know, it, it, th those, those strengths and they go away sometimes. And that's why I got to watch myself. I, I give away too much stuff sometimes. Nah, nah, helping everybody, right? That's <laughs> what we're doing here. So I feel like we could talk about line shopping all day, but we now have a very clear understanding of what it is and how to go about it. Thanks to you, Crack. Um, and so of course there's a full guide also on WSN.com to line shopping. So you guys check that out and learn a little bit more. But right now we're gonna move on to our interview. And I'm excited because today we are talking to Jay Cornegay. Jay is the head of operations for the, the biggest sports book in Vegas, right, Bill? Called the Superbook for a reason. Superbook. It's the Superbook. <laughs> yep. Superbook. Uh, yeah, it's the Westgate in Las Vegas. It's the largest book in Vegas. And we spoke with him a little bit earlier. So let's check out what he has to say. Jay, it's such a pleasure to have you here. And especially during this time, it, this is a very, very strange time for sports books in particular, right? Because normally when this all started, 
March is a huge month for sports books. And you've got uh, a situation here where the pandemic has cost you the, the men's basketball tournament, Major League's opening day, Wimbledon, the British Open, the NBA and NHL seasons were pushed back as well as the Major League Baseball. You'll push back the Derby, push back the Masters, NASCAR, a lot of lost action for you guys. So how are you guys acclimating to this new world right now? Well, it, it's, it's ever changing and uh, certainly disappointing when we closed down on, on March 17th, right before uh, one of the busiest uh, uh, times of the year. Um, and uh, very unfortunate that the playoffs for the NBA and NHL had to be pushed back. But looking at the bright side, we're looking at possibly the biggest August we've ever seen in the sports world as uh, baseball just recently announced that they're going to start play and, and uh, the NHL and NBA are on schedule to resume their season with playoffs in August. So it's shaping up to be one of the biggest months that uh, we've seen recently. Yeah, all those sports coming back at one time, I have to imagine that do you expect that you're going to have a lot more action? Because now you're going to have normally the, the seasons are spread out, right? So but now you're going to have NHL, NBA and Major League Baseball and football starting in all at the same time. Do you expect that that's going to equate to, to more wagers or do you think people just pick and choose? You know, it's a good question because we're, we're just not sure. Uh, yeah. We, you know, when when we uh, reopened our app on May 7th, um, you know, the betting was pretty solid uh, considering what sports were being offered. And, and really the, the, the handle, the handle flag was carried by UFC. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the action on UFC uh, more than doubled in, in some of those cards. And, and some of those cards weren't great. Uh, some were okay, but some of them were not, but they were still getting a tremendous amount of action. Of course, we've seen NASCAR, a, a huge spike there. Uh, the recent uh, golf events, probably close to 40 to 50% increase there. So yeah, I would think just in our, our short sample of returning to our, our sports schedule, uh, that we would see some record amounts uh, that uh, uh, we expect in August. Wow. You know, let, let me jump in here, Jay, because uh, for many people that don't know, uh, you are like the Billy Walters of the other side of the counter. You're the guy that, uh, in my opinion, uh, you're the super book. Look what you look what you've done there. And I think you've been there 16 years. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. So, you know, you started back. Um, I know you're from Colorado originally, but I remember when I was I, I lived back in New Jersey. I would come into town and I would go right to the Imperial Palace because <laughs> you guys uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Weren't you like the originator of all these different proposition bets? And the reason why we're at where we are today is because of you and your team. Well, and you, you said it, you hit on, on the head there, Bill, uh, as far as the team. You know, we, we've uh, a lot of us have been together for over 20 years um, and I tip my cap. I couldn't have done it without them. And they really deserve uh, uh, most of this credit because, uh, you know, guys like uh, Ed Sammons and, and Jeff Sherman, you know, we've been together for over 25 years. Uh, you know, we, we never in, invented the prop or came up with it. It was, we just really expanded the menu. You know, we just thought that there was, uh, the market was really underserved for second tier and third tier sports. Uh, we just wanted to offer a lot more uh, selection. You know, we were that little book in the Imperial Palace on that second floor. And uh, I think we had about four or five windows up there, but it was the second floor in the heart of the strip. It wasn't the easiest place to get to. And uh, that's why we opened up a drive through sports book back in those days. But uh, I really appreciate the, the kind words, but it's, it's been, um, you know, that was our niche back in the, you know, we, we wanted to find an angle, you know, and we wanted to come up with something different things. We wanted to come up with a huge betting menu and that's what we did back in the nineties. Well, it's well I'll good. tell you, you, oh, you mentioned, I'm sorry, Rosalie, you no, mentioned, okay. you mentioned Ed and Jeff, and these are guys that can probably make a living. As a matter of fact, I know for a fact, something I never talked to you about with Jake, these guys can make livings probably betting on sports themselves. So they're sharp enough to uh, make livings betting on sports. I know that you have some of the sharpest team there making those lines. Uh, and I have to hand it to you to keep those guys happy in corporate America and corporate uh, uh, a company. So it, I have to hand it to you and, and your team. You guys, I know one thing. 
when I bet with when I bet with Westgate on my app, I, if you have the best line, I always second guess myself and say, oh, man, <laughs> I'm betting with Westgate. I don't know if this is the best thing to do. <laughs> I heard, you know, we watch you, Bill. I've seen, you know, uh, obviously we really highly respect you. And we know that when when you place a bet, you know, we feel like we almost dropped the ball or something. Okay, <laughs> we'll check everything. What's going on? What did we miss? Uh-oh. <laughs> Oh, here comes crack. We're in trouble. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> We're in trouble. Well, you know, it sounds like the, the, you need creativity right now, right? All that creativity that you had in, in setting prop bets and stuff and making yourself stand out. You need the creativity right now. Because how do you set lines for like a 60 game baseball season? And how does it affect future bets? We know a lot of people bet the Yankees to win the World Series. How does that affect all of that? Well, we're going to, since they announced the and confirmed the 60-game schedule, we're going to post uh, our season win totals for the 60-game season coming up, and we should do that this weekend. Uh, we've already had uh, some meetings on it this morning, and we're going to pretty much prorate the season, mm -hmm. and, and uh, that's going to be our starting point. And then we're going to look at the schedules that they're they're facing and go from there, and, and that's going to be it. That's going to be <laughs> our our, you know, our basic strategy. I don't know where else to, to go from there, except for what we originally set, because nothing has really changed from there. And then look at the schedule that they're going to be presenting, uh, whether it's tomorrow or Friday or, or uh, um, Saturday, whatever, whenever that comes out, we're going to take a hard look at that schedule, put those um, two together and come up with numbers. Gotcha. So Fantastic. with, with everything that's going on, obviously there's some sports where, illnesses are going to be totally different, you know, with, with what we're looking at. Normally with sports, we look at sports injuries, but now, you know, with Corona coming in and, and COVID with players getting struck down by COVID, like with golf this weekend, you know, we've heard of a number of people and caddies that are not going to be able to play. So in golf, it makes a little bit of a difference, but when it comes to these team sports, you know, how does it change the lines going forward with the team sports? Well, we're just going to have to play it by ear. Obviously, we've never seen anything like this before. So we're, we're just going to go day by day and see what's presented to us and, and make a, adjustments accordingly. Um, I know that uh, the baseball has announced that they're going to have uh, like a, a DL coronavirus. I'm, oh, I'm not yeah. sure. I haven't looked into too much, but uh, but. I, I believe other uh, sports will do that as well. They'll have something like a, a, a DL just for the virus where you have to take a break for a, a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And obviously it's going to depend on who those players are, you know, and, and, and when they go down and what the backups look like uh, or what the, you know, what, what pitcher they have to bring up. So we're, we're just going to do it on the fly and just do the best we can. I just like some of the sharpest betters like Bill. I mean, it's, you guys are going to be new to this as well. So it, it's the same for both sides of the counter. Do you think Pretty that much. the, Oh, sorry, Bill. Uh, no, I said that that's great. And you know, you said something about your guys. So your guys will be in those deep meetings, just like you are for NFL props during the Super Bowl. Your guys will be in that same thing this weekend talking it out amongst three or four of you and, and what we're going to put uh, a line on each one of these over-unders. Uh, you guys originate a lot of that stuff. Am I correct? You, you don't, you know, you're one of the places that I ask, I always say that originates a lot of these lines and you'll put them up based on those team meetings. Is that correct? Uh, that's how you're going to be handling this, uh, these over-unders for the season. Yeah, we, we, uh, meetings is probably put it very politely. Uh, um, discussions is it is even <laughs> is very pc <laughs> it, it actually breaks into some arguments i was gonna say <laughs> are there a lot of curse words going oh, around yeah there? there's some bragging rights there and maybe even some side bets <laughs> that oh, yeah. on when oh, we're yeah. setting these lines but that's how you you know that's how we work it out that's how we've been doing it for years we certainly respect one another and uh um you know, the more minds you put in that room, you know, the, the better those lines are. And that's what we're going to do with baseball this weekend. Okay. Great, Jay. And, you know, I want to put this little plug in. It's a shameless plug, but it's true. I'm never going to lead no one in the wrong direction just because I have a guest on or something. It is such a pleasure to have you on here. People don't realize what the Superbook is. If you come to Vegas, you have to go over to the Westgate. I'll always consider it the Hilton in my brain. But, yeah. <laughs> Elvis. but you know, uh, the history, rich history it has. But you have to go into the Superbook to see these giant screens, these big uh, 
comfortable like lazy boy chairs and of course you have couches and vip areas in the back there there's no other way and that's one of the biggest questions i get asked hey crack where should i go bet at i get so many emails or just twitter questions where should i go i'll go in, in that place and just videotape and say where should you go take a peek at this and look at mm -hmm. these screens and 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 you know you guys uh recently put a couple of millions and millions of dollars behind uh this place and i tell you anyone that comes into this place realize that you are the super book for a reason yeah well i appreciate that bill and uh yeah we just actually put in new screens believe it or not uh during this downtime and uh that was a surprise to me but the, the other screens were about five years old they had uh some miles i think some freeway miles but uh they were uh looking to improve uh you know the brightness and the resolution uh, even more than what we had before so wow. the book was a mess i'm gonna tell you it was a disaster i was coming in here two or three times a week and it was just a con construction zone so but i do appreciate it and it's it's a great venue uh you know we we have uh you know over thirty thousand square feet we put 18 million dollars into this place uh, <laughs> over the last few oh years God. and um you know we we have some great food and uh, beverage offerings. It's a real 360 degree experience. So appreciate it. Oh, so man. Great. that's go ahead, great. Go ahead, go ahead so, Rosalie. Oh, so how is, so you guys, the downtime was a great time to do all of those upgrades. How is the reopening in Vegas going? What are you noticing? Well, when we first opened up, uh, we noticed a lot of account activity. A lot of people wanted to address their accounts, whether they were depositing money, withdrawing money. We had a lot of new, uh, um, accounts opened up as uh, many wanted to get to that mobile and 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 basically bet from the comfort of their their living room <laughs> so we saw a huge spike in that um after that initial uh, push we had a pretty decent belmont day uh on saturday uh, I, I was very impressed by the the handle that we took on on saturday um but you know as you can expect it was it slowed down a little bit after that and, okay. and now people are just waiting for these, uh, you know, some of the big sports to come back. And that's why I'm, I'm very excited to hear that baseball is coming back. Uh, you know, I know that there's going to be some challenges. We know that players uh, are going to come down with uh, COVID. We know that, you know, uh, coaches or staff or whoever is going to come out, you know, come down with COVID and we're going to have to deal with that. And, yeah. and I think they have a pretty good plan in place, even though it's still a very fluid situation and uh, we all will have to react to that, especially since it's a big part of our world. Well, and it's gonna be a little bit different for these, these sports as well, because there's not gonna be any fans in the stands, right? So does that affect how you guys like make the lines? Is that, is that going into the consciousness as well? Well, thanks for bringing that up because that's been a huge argument over the last three months. <laughs> <laughs> That's where some of those curse words were coming from. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, because some of us think that, uh, you know, it has no effect. Uh, some of us think it's, you know, two and a half points, you know, depending wow. on the venue. Obviously, let's say NFL, you look at Kansas City or Seattle, some of those tough places. Mm -hmm. I, I certainly believe it has an impact on the game. Uh, you go down to Miami or, or Tampa Bay or Jacksonville, something like that, you know, mm -hmm. maybe not so much. But I think it has a small uh, um, effect on the line. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm one right in the middle, you know, I'm usually about one and a half, one, one point difference. Uh, but, uh, it's a, it was a, it was, it was a discussion, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, it, again, we walk out of that room, we're fine. You know, we're not, we're not, it's not like we don't talk to each other for the, the next couple hours, you know, we're right back at it, you know, just a few minutes later, but, uh, but when, when uh, you know, some things change and you're right, believe me, we are going to bring it up. You know, it's, bra it's bragging rights. So yeah. uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. We have, we've been doing it for years. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's, uh, um, it's different because I, I, had the, I had the golf tournament on in the book the other day. And I mean, golf itself with the, the main event audio isn't much, but without mm -hmm. fans, it, it was like a Morgan there. I almost, I, well, I did change it to a, <laughs> a soccer game because it, it just was, it was, it just wasn't doable. It was putting yeah. everybody to sleep. There just wasn't yeah. much audio in, in the golf tournament this past weekend. So I changed it to a soccer game and we still left golf up on a big screen, but uh, it's, it's certainly different. Wow. Well, that's, yeah. is that going to make any difference to you crack when you're, when you're looking at those lines, whether the crowds are there or not, are you going to take advantage of some of that you know, for, for baseball season? I don't think as much as football, like baseball, I don't think the home field means as much as it yeah. does to have 
uh, especially collegiate sports, college football, college basketball. Yeah. They need those fans in the stadiums. So I think it has a bigger effect on college sports. But I'm more opt to, let's say, take that road team probably right away in, in, in baseball uh, if the lines are shaped enough to be where I feel juicy on some of those underdogs or some of those they call quote-unquote road teams. So we'll see what happens. Well, Jay, thank you so much for spending some time with us today. Really, really appreciate it. I love the Westgate Sportsbook. I can't wait to see it the next time I'm there and say hello because I'm down in Phoenix. So I will definitely say hi the next time I'm in there. Yeah, definitely do that. And uh, appreciate it, guys. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Thanks, Jay. Really, really appreciate really. your time. Mm -hmm. Such great information. Thanks so much to Jay for spending some time with us. I really appreciate it. I know Bill does and so do the viewers. All right, here we go to my favorite part. I love it all though. It's uh, Crack's Picks and Plays and the week to come. All right, so Crack, I know we've got some great picks. You have a very specific pick though that you're gonna talk about for this, right? Yes, I'm going to give a, another golf one. Hey, we won it last week real easy. Uh, one yeah, tell us about that. Tell us, tell us about that. I heard Matsuyama had, had a not a great uh, yeah. time yeah. out there, right? Yeah, Matsuyama did not make the cut, so he didn't even play day three and four. Our guy, uh, Gary Woodland, made the cut right away. If you make the cut, the other guy doesn't make the cut. The bet's over, you win. And uh, so that was a successful one. And uh, another successful week, we were actually 2-1 and one on, on our matchups at Crack Wins. And the matchups are mostly what we play. We like giving out our matchups player versus player. So let's uh, – this week we're going to stick with it. We're going to stick with golf. Uh, we're going to go to – I'm going to give you the rotation here. I got it on my phone. Okay. Uh, rotation number is 7028, Justin Rose over Patrick Cantlay. Now that means we're going to – same thing. That mm -hmm. golfer, Justin Rose, is going to have a better round of golf for the first, second round, third, fourth, of course, for all four rounds. However, we hope that – Justin Rose makes the cut like he did the last two weeks. And uh, Cantlay, this is his first week back. So we hope he comes in a little cold. Okay, good. So that's the pick. Head to head, the golf tournament this weekend. And it's Justin Rose over Cantlay. Yeah, that's it. Perfect. 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 That's, that's your hot pick this week. Of course, make sure you download the Crack Wins app. It's available on both Apple and Google Play, and you get full access inside the world of the Crack Man with his weekly picks along with great betting strategies, tips, and insider content to get more information there. Download that Crack Wins app. All right, so let's answer. Uh, we've got a great question on Twitter from you guys. We love, love, love touching base with you guys and being able to have this conversation with you. So this week, the question comes from Edwin Lord. And he says, he's talking about, he's looking forward to football as I am as well. He wants to know with the Colts, how about eight wins over under the Colts winning nine or more? What do you think about that? Well, you know, that's a team that was my nemesis last year. I had, <laughs> I had the Colts as one of my future bets to win, to go over to win their division even, I bet them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it was a very upsetting. The quarterback, you know, quit. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, well, he, he retired. Yeah, he retired. Yeah, he retired. Luck, <laughs> luck, uh, retired. But they've got Phillip Rivers, your favorite now. Yeah, so <laughs> you, you, you're picking the quarterback that last week I talked about as, as being the guy that has let me down more than any other uh, player in, that I could think of in history of any sport. So Exactly. Uh, but however, however – you know, I, I, I would lean toward, more towards, believe it or not, the over eight wins. Uh, and I haven't looked at, at that yet as it being a bet. But I, have, I would lean more towards over that, them than having a, a losing seven and nine season right now. So it's not going to be an official play until it's an official play on crack wins. But you're asking a question spontaneously. I'm giving you an answer. Hopefully that helps you a little bit. There you go. So there you go, Edwin. Crack gives you the over on the Colts going uh, nine or more. So that's that's it for this week's show. Wow. We got a lot of information in there, Crack. Excellent. Great yeah. job. 
Yeah, wonderful stuff. So I want to thank you guys for watching episode three. We look forward to seeing you back week next week for episode four. Of course, you can always see us on WSN and of course, all the great information out there on WSN.com as well. Make sure you go there for all your sports betting knowledge and needs. And of course, you know, make sure you get those Twitter questions in for next week too. You can tweet at WSN Sports. You can tweet at Bill Crackman. You can tweet at Rosalie Michaels. Make sure you has hashtag Wisecrack so we make sure we see those questions for you, for you and maybe you'll be the question we answer next week. Until next week, we'll see you then, right, Bill? Yes, thank you, everyone.